Hey there YouTube, this is going to be a quick review of a small little computer. Uh, it's a Dell FX170. It's, a, it's one of those embedded systems that is supposed to be mounted behind the computer screen. But it's a pretty capable machine. It's, a, it's got an Atom N270 CPU. It's a single core, hyper-threaded, so it's two logical cores uh, and one single physical core. Uh, and it's packaged in this little tiny little box. It's got um, a bunch of uh, I/O ports, built-in sound, and it runs Windows XP Pro really well. In this case, I have these units. I have about ten of these units, and the, it's running Windows Embedded Standard, which is a a version of Windows XP Professional that takes up very little space. Uh, because uh, these units have an onboard IDE hard drive, uh, IDE um, SSD basically, uh, that is two gigabytes in size. But I'll show you what I've done so that I can install a lot of different uh, pieces of software such as Warcraft 3, uh, Unreal, Need for Speed 3, uh, Winamp, uh, Command and Conquer, all that uh, without uh, having to deal with the two gigabyte um, limitation on the main system drive. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is um, the, the unit itself. So you can see it's, it's about the size of my hand. Uh, this is the whole computer right here. Um, let me take that out before I show you that. And uh, uh, in the front, we have the power button some act an, an activity light for networking. Headphones, this is where you would plug in your speakers. A microphone input, if you wanted to record from a microphone or from an, an, as, and treat, or treat this as, as a line-in. Two USB 2.0 ports in the front. And in the back, we have the power plug. This has a, an external uh, a brick, uh, you know, one of those AC adapters that uh, provides 12 volts uh, with 5 amps. This unit says that it only needs 3 amps, but since I'm going to be playing some games and stuff, I, I bought one with 5 amps. This is a PS2 port for a keyboard, so it'll save you from using one of the onboard USB ports for uh, a keyboard if you want to use your older you know, PS2 keyboard. And in, in, in this case, since you're going to be playing retro games, maybe you want to get one of those older Dell keyboards, Feels, they feel really nice, and use a PS2 port. This is a DVI output, and it provides both di digital vi video using the DVI interface, or you can do what I do, which is uh, for de demonstration purposes, I have a VGA Sorry, I have a DVI to VGA adapter, and this plugs in here, just like that. And with that, you can uh, plug in a standard VGA monitor. It sticks out a little bit, you know, uh, but hey, if you want to plug in your VGA monitor, this is the way to do it. Um, otherwise, most LCDs nowadays have a DVI connector, but if you're going to be using a CRT, um, you're going to need one of these guys. And I do include it on the units that I sell. So I do um, buy a brand new one and include it with the unit just so that you don't have to go to the hassle of getting one. In the back, you also have two, two USB ports, uh, sorry, two USB 2.0 ports and a gigabit Ethernet adapter um, port. So this will let you get on the internet just by plugging in an Ethernet port. And that's what I do here. I have a... A, a Wi-Fi repeater that I connect my, my an Ethernet cable to, and this guy plugs in here, and and that, now the unit has internet through my Wi-Fi uh, through the repeater. All right, so let me quickly take this apart and um, and show you inside. Okay, so now we are inside the unit. This is the front right here. And uh, basically the, the top cover, this cover has four little screws like this that 
are taken that are, are disconnected from the sides one two three, one two three four and it and it pops right off okay and inside uh, you see most of what you see is the heatsink for the CPU and the and the chipset with ha which has a built-in uh, GMA 950 uh, video card and um, so here's uh, he's part of the CPU this is probably the chipset and um, right here is a little speaker in case you don't have a uh, some a headphone connected you'll you will hear some audio out of the little tiny speaker but it's very very faint uh, so I recommend that you plug in some speakers this right here is the two gigabyte right angled IDE connector so if you look through here you see down in there that's an IDE connector. You can actually buy, go on eBay and uh, buy one of these 44-pin um, uh, IDE drives that with a larger capacity. Um, but I, but I, I, I didn't do it with this one um, because I'll show you how I, I got around that. There's a DDR2 one gigabyte uh, dim, uh, SO dim here. So if you take this out. I believe you can upgrade this to a two gigabyte if you get the right dim, but for Windows XP, honestly, one gigabyte is more than enough for most applications, unless you have like a uh, an app that requires that amount of memory, but very rare. And uh, there's a CMOS battery that is down here. It's got a little connector and you can buy those as well on eBay. It's like one of those laptop types that has a little connector. You unplug it, plug in the replacement. And that's it. It's, there's not much going on in there um, other than than those, than those these important connections for IDE, memory, and uh, the CMOS battery yeah, that I showed you. Um, that's it. I'm going to put this back together, and I'm going to show you how it runs. One more thing, if you're putting when, as you're putting this back together, make sure that you look at the latches, uh, the little lips here on the case, and line them up with the gaps that are in the case because it's very easy to try to cram this the opposite way, and then you'll end up well, it won't work first of all, um, but it, you'll end up uh, potentially breaking these tabs or or bending the case. All right, so if you line them up. They, um, all the all the holes line up correctly. Everything clicks in, and now you can screw everything back together. Okay, so we're back together, and uh, what I'm going to show you is um, my little setup for making this into a fairly usable Windows XP uh, gaming uh, device. Um, so. As I said before, this only has a two gigabyte drive in it, um, and it's not enough for you to install any games. Honestly, it's a uh, on the on the on the drive itself. Uh, it's Windows XP, and you have about six hundred or to seven hundred uh, megabytes left. Um, if you're if you're getting this to play just one game that fits into that six hundred megabytes, then great. You don't need to do what I'm gonna do. But what I did was I purchased one of these really um, low profile um, USB flash uh, flash drives. This little guy has 64 gigs of space. And since it's USB 2.0, it'll run just as fast pretty much as the built-in uh, ID uh, drive. You know, even if it's like, even if it performs like 45 to 60 megabytes per second, that's about as fast as you'll get from the onboard IDE, honestly. You may get 80 megabytes a second from the SSD uh, in the, inside this, this machine, but you won't notice the difference at all in performance-wise when using one of these. So if I plug in this drive here, now suddenly the computer has a, an additional drive in Windows that is 64 gigs in size, and I can install my software all onto that. And what I did is I configured Windows so that every time you install a Windows application, it'll know that this is called the H drive because I assigned it a drive and all the program files are going to be living under this 64 gig volume 
keeping your OS untouched on the main um, uh, two gigabyte drive. So I also, like I said, I, I use these guys, these, these adapters, because I want to use VGA just as somebody would use in the, in the old days and plug that in. And that's it. That's my setup. It's pretty small. You can imagine that you can have like a LAN party with this. You can get multiple of these and play your favorite old retro uh, multiplayer game um, over the LAN and, uh, and have a blast. So let me go ahead and set this up uh, completely, uh, including some speakers that I have, and uh, show you how it works. Okay, so I'm going to show you right now uh, some of the software that I have installed in here and see how and you can see how it performs uh, like I said this is Windows embedded standard it's a Windows XP Pro 32-bit with, with a minimal installation and um, what I can show you here is that um, if you see here on the drive I have two drives I have the OS drive is two gigabytes and that one has 556 megabytes free and the data drive is 64 gigs and that one has 54.9 gigabytes free and if I go into the H drive you see that I have program files and um, I have program files and all my installed software right here. The C drive also has some program files, but it's it's very small. Uh, it's more of the core functionality for Windows, and um, that's it. it. It's it's been working really well like this, and uh, it it has a lot of space left for you to install videos and um, other games and applications anything that you'd like to play um, or transfer between computers on a 64 gig drive now let me show you some of the software that i have running here okay here we are uh, i'm going to show you a couple of uh, games and some software that i have installed here i'll uh, show you warcraft 3 and command and conquer so um Let's let's let me, let me go ahead and into Wall Warcraft three. And okay, as you can see it's very fast little computer for these type of games. And this is loading out of that 64 gig external um, drive. What do you want? You can see it's very performant. You can move around and it runs really well. Okay, I'm not gonna spend too much time in this because obviously this is a very, very Ready long game. But as you can see here, I can just work and and it doesn't slow down so I'm gonna exit and I'll show you another uh, type of game like that called command and conquer gold I'm 
I'm gonna go ahead and exit this. Battle control terminated. Now you can also play some 3D first person shooters like Quake 2 or Unreal on this. Your mileage on those will vary depending on the on the uh, quality level that you that you set. But for example, this is Quake 2. And did it, I'm gonna put it medium. Uh, and the video, let me set it to it's gonna be 640 by 480. And it runs fairly well. But this is already pushing a little bit. As you can see, it runs pretty well. Oh. Quake 2. And, and one last thing to that I want to show you to wrap this up is mod music. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell button so that I can uh, so you can be notified when I upload something new. I love working with these old older hardware or things that are not meant to do what I'm doing with them. So um, let me know what you think in the comments below. And until um, uh, next time, thank you.